Hello, Richard Men speaking. I invite you to visit the private view of my London exhibition at the Hay Hill Gallery. This is my Atlas Shrugged Quadrilogy, a series of four different but interrelated sculptures. Each illustrates Ayn Rand's philosophy and her classic novel, Atlas Shrugged. Atlas I, Escape to Freedom. Atlas is angry. Atlas, representing the achievers of society, has carried the weight of the world on his shoulders, but the increasing weight of freeloaders who do not work and are supported by the state is now too much to bear. Atlas smashes his way out of the world of collectivism, escaping to freedom, so he can create his own perfect world. Atlas II, Genesis, A New Golden World. Atlas has now created his own perfect world, conceived in freedom of individual rights, embodied in laissez-faire capitalism, the new golden world, free of the weight of freeloaders. It's now rising in the air on its own power, no longer requiring Atlas to struggle with the weight of the world on his shoulders. Atlas 3. I own the world. Atlas free from the restraints of collectivism, is now at its productive best. The new world, dedicated to individual rights, soars up in the air. The triumphant Atlas runs, pulling the world behind him as he races to achieve his destiny. Atlas 4. Together we are indomitable. The uniting of the man of achievement to the woman of achievement to produce a cohabitation of indomitable will and purpose, an alpha male and an alpha female. Each is physically beautiful, each mentally strong, each independent. Both share the same ideals and goals, which they pursue with impenetrable resolve. Together, they race to their destiny pulling their new world of individualism behind them. Tarzan lives. As I grow older, I go back to the days of my youth and my wonderful memories of Edgar Rice Burroughs' Tarzan of the Apes, the gripping cliffhanger, Johnny Weissmuller black and white movies with his classic Tarzan yell Bern Hogarth's pace-setting Tarzan comic strips, and even Walt Disney's contemporary Tarzan animation. My Tarzan is young, muscular, slim. 
He is airborne, defying gravity as he soars through the trees, swinging from vine to vine, long hair wild and flowing, as he gives his famous Tarzan yodel yell. I've added his leopard skin loincloth, his knife, bow, and quiver of ours. He's surrounded by jungle vines and trees. His outstretched left arm grips a vine as he soars through the air. His outstretched white arm reaches for the viewer. A built-in sound system is enclosed in the second base. A button, when pressed, will activate a recording of Tarzan's classic yell. <laughs> So he didn't say anything. So how's your wife? How's your wife? She's still in one piece. His wife's expecting yeah, any minute. Any, any minute. Now. But she's still in one piece. Okay. Well, listen, I'm uh, really, really grateful for you. No, no, at all. Afterwards, we're all going to get together. Hi, Sarah. Nice to meet you. You had a look at the sculptures, yeah? I can, uh, especially from Israel to here. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. That's commitment. Yeah. So are you a friend of the artist? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm, uh, I'm 65. No. I'm 65. Uh, we tend to get the energy. Yeah. Yeah. How do you shape and mold the cross? When you when you say you're doing that, what is that? This was done. This was done originally in clay. In clay. In clay. In clay. In clay. And then, then then after after the clay, a mold is made, and then from the mold. The mold is made uh, of, of, of the clay, and the mold is a rubber mold that's made of clay. And then after you have the rubber mold, you pour wax into that. And then you have a positive impression of the wax. Then you correct the wax and make sure that it's exact to the sculpture, and that takes a while. And then you cover it with ceramic. You bake the ceramic around it. And then you've heard the word, the lost wax method. Mm -hmm. That's 3,000 years old, it was invented by the ancient Greeks, and it's never changed to the day. So then you pour the hot metal into uh, uh, the, the, the ceramic covered wax. The wax melts and goes through. The metal is inside the ceramic, because the ceramic is, is harder than the metal. And then when, it, when, when uh, the metal hardens and it cools off, then you take a sledgehammer and break the ceramic off, and then you have the sculpture. But then there's a lot of work that has yeah, to be yeah, done on it, as far as that's concerned. This is Dina. This is Dina. This is Mark. Mark's my person. I know. We, I just told her. Okay. Yeah. I told her. I heard about it today because I read about the sorry state of the ship. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so this is. A, she came all the way from Israel here to uh, to be with us. The exhibition. She's a yes. lifelong friend. Yes. And I came all the way from Fulham. <laughs> <laughs> This is Itzhak, come over here. This is my training partner. We're in the gym seven days a week, all day. Yeah. My younger brother, huh? Yeah. He's tired of carrying the world on his shoulders because half of the world are freeloaders. They don't work, they don't right. contribute. So it's too heavy. Oh, so you've got a political message in these ones. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a big political message. It's a capitalistic message. So you got 
uh, just Europe, Australia, New Zealand, and uh, the Americas show. Yeah. Everything else is locked out, they're not free. So anyway, he's smashing his way to freedom so that he can create a new world for a brand new world. This is the next in the series. It's called Genesis, a new world, a new golden world. The world is no longer on his shoulders, it's rising in the air. Why is that? Because the freeloaders are gone. Only the people who produce are there. Only the okay. achievers. And that, that one over there? That is... This, this is... A, this is a, the world is not Atlas is running with the world to achieve his destiny. And, and this is a world dedicated to laser chair capitalism. And here, I will try it and then I see, oh, this is the place. Okay. Because, yeah, I mean, the, the location is beautiful, yeah. isn't it? With all the, yes, beautiful corner. Yeah. 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 Can we have yeah. a picture with you? Sure. Yes, of course. Well, he's yeah. taking a picture yeah. now. Oh, we can, we can, okay, we can do three of us, yeah? I had an operation uh, 12 weeks ago. What well, did right. right. so so you do? I'm going to the right track. Are you Too is good because with bronze, with a good patina, you can get rich uh, shadows and highlights and everything. And with the stainless steel, it bounces back at you, so you get. And then if you look at it here, you can see the reflection in the, the oh, yeah. polished stainless steel, so you have the double image. This is Atlas representing all the achievers of the world. Right. Escape for freedom. He's tired of carrying the world on his shoulders because it's gotten too heavy because half the world are free holders. They don't work without contributing. Right. You got it. What do you remember? Okay. And so this is Atlas. He's smashing his way out of the world to create his own world. Here he's creating it. The world is no longer on his shoulders. It's up in the air because it supports itself because once you get rid of the freeloaders, it's a different world. This one, he's running with it. The world is mine. So he's running with the world. And now this one, Nikki. Together we are done. You have to have a, you, you have to have, if you have a super alpha male, you have to have an alpha female. So, she is a uh, dominant, and he is a uh, hard work. Or he's Hank Rizzi, or he's Tom Dalton, John Dalton, and uh, she's Dagny Taggart. So, yeah, that's it, that's it. And so, it says, together we are in dominance. Oh, you might be well. I'm sure.
Now, come over here. Look, he's talking to you. Push this. broken world records a total of 12 times. His life as it stands spans 14 highly successful careers from famous rodeo and boxing champion to billionaire tycoon. Now in his 84th year he has established himself as a respected professional sculptor. Have a look around this evening at every detail of his remarkable work and take time to hear the stories for yourself. There's the anatomically perfect atlas the stunning quadrilogy that gives us a taste of Anne Rand's profound effect on Richard's life. And then there's Against Goliath, a triumphant piece created in honour of the artist's own victory against cancer. Tarzan could perhaps be a self-portrait of Richard's lifelong pursuit of adrenaline, testing his strength and courage, diving off 170-foot high cliffs, water skiing for 11 hours non-stop, fighting two great white sharks, and coming out, as you can see, very much alive. But I can promise you, all these stories are much better told by the man himself. And so, it's my great pleasure to say, on behalf of Hayhill Gallery, I present the artist, Richard Mintz. I'm reminded of Pat and Mike on an African safari. They're lost, they're running into a pride of hungry lions. Pat reaches down and he starts lacing up his shoes. And Mike says, Pat, you don't really think that you can outrun these lions. Pat says, no, but all I have to do is outrun you. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm on a race and I'm running and I'm on a race against time. I don't know how much time I have, but whatever time I have, I want to create the best art that I can, as much as I can, and for as long as I can. I really enjoy every minute of what I do. I can't wait to wake up in the morning to see all of these children that I'm, I'm creating. And everything that you see here, they're, they're really real to me. Uh, Atlas, uh, Tarzan, uh, David, uh, Samson, they're real people, and uh, uh, I can't wait to, to see them. So you're looking at all of my children here, and I have five children that I put on this earth, but I've spent a lot more time creating these children than I did the five children on this earth. As a matter of fact, <laughs> as a matter of fact my wife said it only took me five minutes, but I can't judge. <laughs> I told you I work fast. <laughs> I can sum up my goals very quickly by paraphrasing Rudyard Kipling. When Earth's last picture is painted and the tubes are twisted and dried, when the oldest colors have faded and the youngest critics have died, we shall rest in faith we shall earn it, lie down for an eon or two, till the master of all good workmen shall set us a work I do. And no one shall paint for money, and no one shall paint for fame, and no one shall paint with sorrow, and no one shall paint with shame, but each in his separate scepter, and each in his separate star, shall paint the thing as he sees it, for the God of things is of their art. So that's what I do. I create what I do for the God of things as they are. Friends are family, and recently I lost a lifelong friend, Major Robert Atkinson Wilson. Major Bob was a Irish intellectual, sparkling, mischievous, 
He was first a valet Queen's Gerber. Then he became a solicitor representing the British government. And then he became a writer and a poet, published. But most of all, he was my steadfast, loyal friend. And so I want to dedicate this exhibition to Major Bob. And one of his favorite songs was Danny Boy. And I have asked another friend of mine, Martin McKay, Piper Martin McKay, undisputedly one of the top, if not the very best, Scottish bagpiper in the land. And here he is. <laughs> with an onion in it on his right hand. 